Hi guys, so Joshua Adi, comicbookmovie.com. How are you both doing today? Doing well, how about yourself? Yeah, great, thank you. And it's such a pleasure to be able to speak to you both about the film. I watched it again this week and it's just so much fun. You must feel so proud and so happy to have seen the response to it since it came out a couple of months ago. Yeah, well, thank you. It has been, it's been a lot of fun. And I mean, honestly, it's hearing people that like it and it resonates with, I, that's just the best. It's just, you know, so thank you. Come true in every way. This project yeah. has officially be, become a dream come true in every conceivable way. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Well, I mostly write about comic book movies, so I'm pretty familiar with how toxic certain fandoms can get. And <laughs> obviously that is something this film really addresses head on. So what made you want to go down that route? Because it works so brilliantly within the film. But And were you ever concerned maybe about pushing those buttons of, of that certain sort of section of fans, would you say? Yes, we were. Uh, you know, I mean, honestly, the, all credit is to Jamie and Guy, the writers. They wrote they, it was their idea. They wrote the script. And when we read it for the first time, it, it really, it really worked for us. We thought, wow, this is great to be able to talk about this because it's something, you know, we're movie fans. We get it. Like we're a part of that. And I think the fun of this whole process has been that we're on both sides of that coin and that we kind of, you know, we're not like on a soapbox. We we're we're in, in it, having the conversation while we are doing the thing that we're talking about. So it, there's a meta upon meta kind of thing happening. And it's, you know, it's what Scream does best, like all screens, is have that kind of conversation about something happening right now. And I think that this, this for this movie, when we read it, it felt to us like exactly hitting the target, like the thing to be talking about. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm curious, how involved, obviously, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and Nev Campbell all come back here, but how involved were they in terms of, where their characters had been before they came back to the film and, and obviously where their journeys went throughout this movie as well. And they were very involved in crafting the, the journey in this specific journey in this movie, all, all three of them. Um, I think one of the things that we wanted to do just as, as fans of theirs and certainly, you know, with understanding that they've lived with these characters for far longer than, <laughs> than, than we have, um, was to get them involved as early as possible and, and really get their thoughts. Uh, for as much as we think we know, you know, who Sydney and who Gail and who Dewey are, the way that those that, that they as performers approach those characters is something so personal to them and that we could never really know. And so having their input, you know, and having them just sort of steer things and and you know, I, I think to Guy and Jamie's credit, they they nailed who the characters are and who the, you know, were sort of where they're at in their lives in the draft. But they were really instrumental in in just nuancing and shaping, you know, who the characters were on screen in ways that we would never have been able to do without their without their specific input. They were so so invaluable to the process, and and um, and then I think also just having them involved with such a vote of confidence in what the whole process was. It was so while they're certainly super integral to the story, just knowing that they were there. And that they were had sort of welcomed us into this existing family was um, it was it was it gave us all the shot in the arm that we needed I think to have the confidence to actually pull the thing off and um, we're we're just eternally grateful to them and just such huge fans of all of them. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! Because it goes without saying, Ghostface is such an iconic horror character, but again, like a lot of characters like that been parodied over the years and maybe watered down a bit. So when you're coming into this film, what was the biggest challenge really with making Ghostface a really terrifying adversary for these characters again? I mean, it's funny because for us, because that's very true, right? I mean, there's been how many parodies of Scream and Ghostface, but for us, if done properly, Ghostface with the big knife trying to kill you should be really scary. And that was something, you know, we really wanted to focus on. And one of the things that we found during this process is we we were so terrified, especially by the original, that we've kind of wanted to recreate that that level of fear. And, you know, one of the things that keeps coming up is that ours is way more brutal than the others, which for us, we never said that once. That was never a conversation. We were never like, oh, we got to out brutal the first four. For us, it was the experience of watching the original and how just insanely like 
heartfelt it is and violent at the same time. I mean, obviously the Casey Becker scene is one of the, it's like one of the best scenes in movie history, not just horror movies and how it just ratchets up the tension, ratchets up the brutality, ratchets up the, the emotion at the end when her parents come home. And so I think for us, that, that taste never left our mouth. And so it was just, it never, it never felt not scary to be totally honest. I mean, it just, it's a scary character, you know? And I think, so our job was to make sure that we're presenting the scary version of this, not the version that you've seen in the parodies. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And of course, Roger L. Jackson comes back to voice Ghostface here and he is such an important pivotal part of this character. So, well, and I think undervalued as well to some extent. So what was it like for you guys to be able to work with him in, in, I guess, in the recording booth to, to bring Ghostface back to life for this film? I mean, I think you're right. I think, I think undervalued is the right way to put that. I think that you don't, you know, we all forget that, you know, that's other than the mask, which is its own thing. That voice is what connects us to killer and what makes that killer feel like a a slasher icon, right? Up there with any of the the great slasher icons. It's exactly, it's so, it's so much the identity of what Ghostface is. And you know, Roger, I think Roger really knows that. And I think the thing that about Roger as a, as a performer, as, as, a, as a person, other than as Ghostface, is he's really playful. And I think the thing that the, the, the playfulness of Ghostface, the kind of gamesmanship of, of what Ghostface is, and, and which is so much in the vocal, the affectation of, of how he sounds, that's Roger. He's always messing. He's always messing with you. He called in and we shot a lot of the opening sequence with, with Jenna Ortega. You know, he was, he was on the phone with her live and we'd, we'd finish a take. We'd call cut. One of us would grab the phone from Jenna and Roger would just still be in character trying to creep all of us out. And that's just, I think that he just really gets a kick out of that. He's, he really invests himself fully. And I think so much of what what Ghostface is, is in that kind of playful approach that, uh, again, it's just, it's just who Roger, who Roger is at his core. <laughs> oh, amazing. And of course, thanks to streaming platforms now, like, like Paramount Plus, franchises like this can expand, I think, in quite unexpected ways. So how would you guys feel about maybe taking something like those stab movies in the film and maybe expanding on something like that? I know you said there's a lot of deleted scenes that you filmed a lot more, but yeah, how would you feel about maybe revisiting that on something like an episodic basis? We joked about it a lot. We've said that it would be so fun to have, to, to make to make stab movies, like to literally just go make stab movies, make a, make a bunch of them. It, it, it would be such a fun muscle, muscle to flex. It'd be such a, a fun way to look at something that is already so self-referential to then go even another layer into that world would be wild. I mean, we've never had a, a real conversation about it, but it, it is a great idea. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fingers crossed. And I have to ask, obviously, news recently came out about a sequel being greenlit. And I know uh, a couple of days ago, Neve Campbell said that she's maybe been asked to return. So anything you guys can maybe tease about what your plans are for that or anything that you would like to explore in that next film or is too soon to say? Outer space. Sorry. Oh, was that a spoiler? Go <laughs> space in space. Uh, no, I think I think the thing that we can't say much about it, but I think what we can say is, you know, what we love about every scream movie in the canon is that they i think they take what the expectation of it of it is and totally flip it on its head right that there's a the movie is it, the movies have to at their best be aware of what the audience is thinking is going to happen and then deliver on that in a way that's totally unexpected and that's the fun thing of these movies right that's that's what we're looking to design right now is how do we how do we give people that scream experience in a way that they're totally unprepared, un- unprepared for. Um, and that's a really fun challenge. We, we hope to just get to be a part of it forever. Awesome. And one very quick final question for you both. You've obviously seen the response to the film from fans and critics being really positive, but for you both, what's the most positive experience and the thing you're proudest of about delivering this film and the way it's turned out? I think, I think for me, you know, Tyler will probably share these. I mean, I think it's maybe twofold but kind of in a weird way, the same thing is the, the kind of family that we created that happened when we were shooting was so special. And it's like, we made a lot of like, I think hopefully lifelong friends. It was very, 
it was a very, it was a really incredible experience just on a personal level. And then also hear us hearing from fans who have, you know, grown up with these, these movies and these franchise, this franchise, and it's been a part of their lives since they were kids or, you know, before they were born, like their parents loved it. And, you know, it's kind of what they talk about, like the characters talk about in the movie, but to have those people reach out and say that they really like this and that it felt really true to them and that it moved them. It's, it's incredible. It's just, I mean, there's no higher compliment, you know, I liked it is great, but I liked it. And it really meant something to me on a personal level is yeah. the highest compliment. Oh, amazing. Well, Tyler, Matt, such a pleasure to speak to you both. As I said, you knocked it out the park, park with this film. So cannot wait to see what you do next space or otherwise. And thank you. <laughs> thank you, Josh. Thank Good you, Josh. You. Yeah. Have a great day, guys. You too.